The Reckoning. After losing her husband during the Great Plague, Grace Haverstock is unjustly accused of being a witch and placed in the custody of England's most ruthless witch hunter, Judge Moorcroft. Forced to endure physical and emotional torture while steadfastly maintaining her innocence, Grace faces her own inner demons as the devil himself starts to work his way into her mind. Does The Reckoning prove it's a good movie by sinking, or does it not hold its weight and float? Let's get to the review. So let's start off by talking about witch and plague paranoia. This movie does a really good job of kind of giving you the experience of what it would be like living in 17th century England during the Great Plague and I guess not at the peak of the witch trials, but, you know, during the witch trials, witch hunts. And I think it's crazy to see that, you know, we have the sickness going on and everybody's scared to get it, even though we know that the sinister, you know, squire obviously gives Joseph, Grace's husband, the sickness is by swapping, you know, drinks, but it seems very eerie even during this time where we have, you know, the pandemic going on, that we have the plague, you know, kind of being this kind of foreshadowing of something very sinister and dark. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the witches. I kind of, you know, I didn't really realize it till just now, but those are two, you know, bad things. And that it's easy to see that the witch that has been accused in town and, and is already hanging you know, they, they blame her for some of the stuff that's going on. And they think that if they can get all the witches purged from the town, the plague will be over. You know, very ignorant minded things, but they're thinking more, this is very simple minded. And it's just not what really happens. But obviously that makes it quick to assume that Grace could be a witch because of her not doing what the squire wants and him saying that she is, even though we clearly know she's not. And there's even people in the town that may not actually think she is her friends who live down this, I'd say down the street, down the road. So obviously we know that there are, you know, this kind of, paranoia and this kind of tug of war between you know what's real and what's not real and going with the bandwagon just so you don't seem out of place which we clearly see her neighbors doing when they the wife doesn't want to accuse her of being a witch but the husband does because he doesn't want to you know be labeled as a friend of a witch so stuff like that and it's just crazy to think that this movie does a really good job of you know kind of showing that dang i would not want to live during that time you know i can see why i live in the country all by myself and not be with the town because i do i do one wrong thing or say one wrong thing and I'm going to be accused of a witch. Or if I come in contact with just the wrong person at one time, I could get sick and die. It's crazy to think about. So diving more into the movie itself, I wanted to kind of talk about the trial progression. So let's talk about the day-to-day. -day. So if you notice during the movie, there's these like kind of like day one, day two. I didn't really care for that because there was a lot of times I thought to myself, are we already on the next day? We just haven't got the little thing come up on the screen yet. I wish I kind of had not, had not done that. I think it would have been better if we had George... If we had George, if we had Judge Moorcroft come to the town and he has like these set torture or trials he's going to do to prove that Grace is a witch, and we maybe do it that way as a progression, like trial one, trial two, trial three. Because as we can see, you know, during his progression, he's not able to get a confession out of Grace, which I thought to myself the whole time, why didn't he ex better explain what these devices are going to do to prove that she's not a witch versus torturing her or punishing her by submission i mean why is that what they did now i don't know if that's mainly like how it is historically that it was done but you know even in my little you know catchphrase in the beginning about how if this movie will sink or float i mean that was more of a trial to see if that was a witch you know so i don't know why especially with the device you know that goes into her lady parts i don't know what that would have done to prove that she's a witch because basically i just would have assumed that it's more painful and just makes her bleed a lot Next up, I want to talk about the devil. So I thought this movie did a very interesting way of bringing him into play. This is not like a traditional horror movie where it's more like, you know, all the supernatural per se. I think what it is, is, you know, we have this town, like I said, with the plague going on, which is something dark. And then we have these witch hunts where people are accusing each other of being witches and torturing them and all that kind of stuff. So I think that kind of invokes him already. You know, in other words, it, it makes it a very good environment for people to not be completely listening to the word of God and kind of, you know, hindering on their dark tendencies and stuff in the back, you know, stuff that the devil would be more privy to. That's what I'm saying. So I think that already being a kind of a festering thing going on made it really easy for him to kind of slip into the jail and be like, Hey Grace, what's going on? You know, you look lonely. You need people. Well, I look, I could look like Joseph and bring you comfort. You know, that's obviously what the sexual scenes going on, you know, very playing on her, her emotions very, very well. But I think it was did a really good job of of you know not making him so stereotypical in a way. I I, I know that may sound silly because you're like, well, he is the devil. But I mean, he he it showed us more of the deceptive aspect of it and how it was so easy for her to like, oh, I could just go with this. 
Now, in saying that, there were parts of me that were like, do it, Grace. Go to the evil side. Show us this, like, Jean Grey, like, you know, persona that could be, like, the witch and, like, let them have it. You know, there was times I'm like, just do that. But, you know, ultimately, overall, we we know that the devil is there and ready to take her whenever she's ready, which I find very interesting. But I just thought it was a good job of using the devil in a way that's more as a weapon. I, that may be kind of what I'm getting across to is maybe... He could have been used. He could have been used as a weapon if she had wanted him to, to be, and you know, powered her up to do whatever she needed to do to prove not her innocence, but that hey, you want me to be a witch? I'll be a witch. And that leads me into Grace's will because I think this movie does a really good job of you know showing how strong-willed she is, and I commend her on that because I don't know if I could have done gone through all that. I'd have probably given up a long time ago. Burn me. That's fine. Whatever. But you know, she has her daughter to think about, and I like that's like the driving force to keep her going throughout this whole movie all up until the very end, you know? So I think it's great that this movie does a very good job of, of showing that through torture, through persuasion from the devil, she still sticks with her faith and, you know, just wants to be with her daughter. Does a really good job of portraying it throughout the whole movie. Now, this kind of leads me into the bigger part of, I guess, what this movie would be about is this movie is labeled as a horror adventure. Now, when I was watching this movie, I was really, based off the cover, especially... Well, there's multiple covers for this movie, but the one I was looking at was more of like her with this cross that's kind of like glowing, you know, not inflamed, but kind of like that. And then her eyes. So it made me seem like she may have been possessed. That's what I was kind of getting at. But then actually after watching this movie, uh, I don't kind of get where the horror comes in other than there are some gory scenes. You know, there's the friend, the neighbors, you know, the wife makes it where the horse basically runs over with the car over her husband and crushes his head. So there's stuff like that that's like gory, I would say. And then, of course, the devil is in it. But I wouldn't say that this is necessarily like a, a true horror movie. I know it's labeled horror adventure, which I was kind of thinking to myself, what is a horror adventure movie? I was really trying to think to myself, what is that? And I was like, okay. So when I looked it up, Anaconda, the Descent movies, the cave, stuff like that came up. So I'm guessing, okay. So it's more like horror is the unexpected or takes like a, a secondary role and the adventure is the, you know, the primary role. So in this case, I think this movie would have benefited more had it taken notes from like the witch, you know, that's kind of set in the same time period and kind of focuses on, you know, the Puritan versus devilish role and maybe gone a little bit darker. So I know Grace was kind of getting to that point with the devil visiting her in the jail but maybe the movie could have gotten gone there a couple of more times and done more sinister things, not so much to her, but just in general, that would have been more horror-esque. Maybe that would have worked a little better. Because I think with this movie, I got more adventure than I did horror sometimes, or just more action. I mean, given the time period, there's a lot of things that would have happened that we know would have happened that wouldn't really come off come across as horror so much as this gory action. And so... I'm not really sure that really benefited it too much. So it, it hurts a lot when I'm trying to rate this movie and really kind of put myself in the movie of more, not so much the historical or that, you know, what am I looking at just for horror? That's going to be how I kind of rate it on. Now, I will say that the whole time I was watching this movie, I feel like it would have been better off as a TV show. I think that there's a lot of times throughout the movie where it could be kind of seems like a lull period or a lot of bridged periods. And I, I think that may kind of hurt the movie especially like in the sequence where she's trying to bury her husband. I mean, that seemed maybe just a tad too long, but I think this would have been better off as like a TV show. It, it reminded me a whole, very much of like The Witcher, Game of Thrones, you know, that kind of, even a lot of the, the British period pieces that, you know, they like to put out. I, I could see that this would have been a really good TV show. I think they could have, even a limited series, they could have made it, you know, good 10, 12 episodes and really kind of more fleshed out the story I know we got a lot of it in, the, in a less than a two hour time, but I think they could have done more with the town building and, and people in the town and the more mystery and like, you know, dramatic parts of it and still had the, or the horror and adventure stuff added in there. So I think overall this would have been better off as a TV show. And that's just in my opinion. Let the comments below what you think if this would have been better as a movie. It is a movie, but if it's better as a movie or if it would have been better as a TV show. So my final thoughts on The Reckoning. I enjoyed it overall. The problem I have with it is I enjoyed it more as not a horror movie. And I, when I was watching it, since it's a horror first, then adventure, not an adventure horror, however you would label that, I feel like this movie could have taken more notes from The Witch and used that to basically make it darker. 
So going just off of that, I would rate this movie three out of five rats, kind of playing off the plague. I think that this movie would do better as a TV show, more horror, just darker overall. And I still think of the message across and Grace can still be the hero and still be strong-willed and get what she wants in the end. Just like you would have any heroine in a horror movie. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen The Reckoning. What do you think about my review? What do you think about my thoughts about the, you know, the devil, Grace's will, the torture and breaking it by trial instead of day? Let me know below. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. For more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the bell. And I'll see you guys next time on The Mashup.